Hey, welcome back to our video that we're doing here on our gadgets from the James Bond movies. In this video, I'd like to create a search function. So that way I don't have to see the entire list of everybody and their gadgets. I can just fill out a form and search for a key letter or a key phrase and I'll get a partial results. So this is going to take some fancy SQL statements and create a new input form. All right, so what should we do first? Should we attack the database, SQL statements, or the form? So I think from practice, it would make more sense to us if we did the form first and then created the database uh, item second. So let's create a form. Okay, so let's start with the controller. That seems to be the best place always to begin your methods here. And let's create a new action called um, search form. So this is going to be a very simple action. All it will do is display a form. So search form is the name of the method and it's going to also be the name of the view. So let's go ahead and create this view. I'm gonna right click and choose add view. And let's do search form as a good name. Let's pick a model. Now which one would make sense here? There is no really uh, search form on here. So the closest thing I can think of is create because create will have a place for us to fill in some fields. So we're going to modify it heavily, but we'll start with create. And the model will be our usual gadget. And click add. All right, so search form is up and running. Now I'm going to run it and just see what it looks like. So here is search form. Now it has uh, pretty much a data entry look to it because we chose the create template. So all I really want is to have a search form with a single field that says name. And we're going to search for some part of the name and then change the button from create to submit or search. All right, so we're back in the, uh, the view here. And since I don't need most of this form, I'm gonna select all of these items such as the uh, description appears in and with this actor and just delete them. Now in this part here, I don't also want to have a bunch of stuff for editors for a model. So really all I need is uh, just an input form. So I'm going to insert some data here and then delete the existing ones. So for my form, I'm going to now just put in a regular HTML. So it's type text. The name of this uh, item here is going to be called search phrase. I'll also assign the ID to it in case we need that. And then importantly, the class name is called form-control, which is a bootstrap item. Now I know that's important because of the item that was already in the previous example. So I can probably just knock out the rest of these. They're, they're gone. So I'm also going to replace the label. Let's change it to uh, a label for the search phrase item. And for the text, I'm just going to say uh, search in the name. So I think this will look different. And instead of create, let's change this to search. Now we don't have any action yet on the, on the form, so let's probably test it out and it won't do anything. All right, it looks like we've got ourselves a search form going here. So if I search for gold and choose search, obviously nothing happens because we don't have an action. But we can make that happen now. So I'm also going to move this label, I think, down one row so it appears right above the input form. That might look better. Now the important part here is what are we going to do for an action? So we're going to do uh, an action and a controller here. So I'm going to call my action is search for name and it is going to be in the gadgets controller. Now search for name is going to expect a string. So the string name is going to come from this right here. So the name of the input field is going to be posted in our controller as well. So search for name is the new uh, controller's action. So I'm going to copy this and make sure I type it correctly. So the controller needs to have a new action. So the search form is one item, but the next one is the processing. So let's uh, create the action here. So it's going to be called uh, public action results search for name. And in the parentheses, we're expecting to get a value from the form called search phrase. So search phrase matches the uh, text name, text box name. And now we're going to have a result that we're looking for called search results. That'll be the name of the view. So in between these two items, we need to go to the database pull out a list of items that match the search results and then feed them to the form. So now let's pencil in the things that our database is going to have to do. 
So first of all, we will create an instance of the uh, gadget DAO so we can get access to the database objects. Then I want to get a list of items back from it. So I'm going to call this list search results. So this will be a list of gadgets. And to get that, we're going to have to invent a new method called search for name. And that expects a parameter as our search phrase. Now, as you can see, this doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to go to the potential fixes and tell it to insert a new method. And let's go see if it put it there. So the gadget DAO certainly does now have a new one called search for name. So let's uh, put the code in here to make this happen. So the best thing that I could do is probably copy and paste from the search or the fetch all command. So let's scroll up to the top here and it looks like fetch all is hiding away. So let's expand him. So I'm just going to copy the entire code right there and let's paste it into the search results. So where was that? Search for name. This looks like the right one. So search for name is going to have to return a list or something? What's missing here? Yeah, so return list is going to have to be sent back. So return, return list. Okay, now all errors have disappeared. So this here is right now, it's identical to the search for everything because our SQL statement says just give me all the gadgets. So really all I have to do is modify this by one little statement. We're gonna say where. So where something. So name is going to be like a parameter. So let's do a search, uh, search phrase. Let's call it search for me. All right, so now we need to replace this search uh, for me placeholder with an actual value. Well, obviously we want it to look like search phrase. So let's, let's copy a piece of code from further down, one of these parameter ideas. So let's get a copy of him and just make sure that I got the right, right parameter here. So paste that. So instead of ID that is called search for me and the data type that I'm looking for is probably a string. Let's see, do we have a string? No, we have, uh, what is it called? nvarchar. Let's use that. And then this value. If we just said connections, uh, if we just said, what was that called? Search phrase? I think it was search phrase. Search phrase seems to be the right thing. We'll just say it is like search phrase. That will work only if you can type the entire name and match the entire name. If one letter is missing, then it won't find the results. So we need to format this with wildcards. So that way you can have uh, some unnumbered letters in front of the phrase and the following after as well. So before and after can be uh, mismatched letters. So we can search for partial matches. So what I'd like to do is to add a statement to the beginning and to the end. So if we put in a percent sign to begin with and then a percent sign to end with it, that will give us the, the value. So that's one way to do it. We could uh, also do a string format command, which might be a little bit more sophisticated, but this will get us started. So what doesn't work here? So command is not known. Looks like I put this too early. So let's cut this and put it down after the command has been defined. So let's see, that looks a little bit more like it. And then we're gonna do a search and we're gonna do a return list. So this search for list should uh, find a partial match. Okay, what else did we do in the controller? We uh, did search results and we're going to send that on to a new view. So search results view does not exist yet. So we need, to, we need to create that. Do we actually need to create that at all? So instead, search results could be interpreted as index. So if we send index a different list than the entire list, it should work. So search results is not really an, a form that we have to create. We can reuse the index form. I believe that'll run. Let's see what happens. Well, we have a problem. It says there's an error in the code. Let's go and check it out. Uh, public is not valid. So what in the world happened? I created a mess here. Looks to me like I forgot another closing bracket, maybe. That'll mess up your life. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, we're up and running. Let's try the show gadgets. And uh, we got this thing working here. Now, what I wanted to do is do the show form. 
search form. Hey, there we go. So search in the name. Let's let's search for the letter Z and see what happens. We do a search, and this looks promising. Elizabeth shows up. Looks like there's a, a bunch of Z's. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, let's go back, and I'm going to type in uh, the word gold. And sure enough, we have gold, golden, golden gun, golden bullets, and golden eyes. So that seems to work. All right, so let's uh, let's now put a link up here instead of show gadgets. Let's let's create a link to the new form. All right, so let's go back into the uh, layout here, and let's uh, add one more action link. So copy and paste our gadgets guy, and instead of show gadgets, we're going to say search. And let's see, the uh, method is called show form, and I think that might run. All right, so let's go look at the search form here. And I want to add one more item here. Let's, let's say I want to add another search form. So I'm going to copy all of this here. Let's search, copy from line 10 all the way down to 36. And I'm going to just put another one in there. And this time, I'm going to say, uh, sir, let's put in another paragraph. And let's say search description. And instead of saying search for name, we're going to change this to a new method called search for description. And I want you to uh, modify the rest of this and make it work so that way it searches on a different field. So see if you can make that work on your own. That's like a challenge. So to make that happen, you're going to have to go into the, uh, the form here, the, the search for name, and you're going to make another one that's going to be similar to it, but it'll search the description instead. And so that way you can get both results. All right, so let's just test this before I'm done here. Let's choose the search button. Let's see, actually, search form I think is wrong. It's supposed to be search, show form, search form. Which one was it? I think it's search form. All right, let's see what happens. I'm going to try the search button. And here's the search form. So now we have two different things. We have uh, search on the name, and then I have search description. So if you put in a description down here, uh, you can search for something else. So I got two search forms on the same page. So uh, make sure that you got that working. Now we've got ourselves pretty much a fully functioning CRUD application. We can do the create, which is C, uh, read, which we just did here. We show everything. Uh, searching is part of read. Update is the editing. And then, of course, delete is the delete button. So fully CRUD operations here. Now, the uh, end of the series isn't here yet. So what I want to show you in the next couple of videos is another way to do your database. So right now, we are writing all the SQL statements. There is another method that uh, Microsoft has invented. It's called the Entity Framework. And Entity is to make your database work much simpler as a programmer. And of course, it's got a lot of features, too, that uh, we don't even know about yet. But there's also some drawbacks. So don't tell Professor Mark Reha that I'm going to uh, show you this because it is usually unapproved for people that are database uh, specialists. Most DBAs don't like these kind of frameworks, but they're very popular and you might catch them in an interview. So we're going to see that in the next couple of videos, how to use Entity Framework.